Hello and welcome to this episode of Block Blaze. Um, my name is Matthew um, and I'm a part of the Kitty Wings family. I'm here today to sort of speak to you about my own experiences as a, an AFL or a young AFL as I like to consider myself. I'm only 23 years old, um, but I have grown up with Lego, I've lived through Lego um, and I've come to make Lego a part of my life. So in 2006, uh, we as Kitty Wings started uh, getting involved in the first LEGO League robotics competition, um, which is one of the, the big uh, robotics competitions uh, focused on LEGO robotics. In fact, Kitty Wings had four different robotics teams in that year. I was part of the, the red team, I do remember that. H having entered into that competition in 2006 was a completely new experience for me. I was only in grade four at the time, um, so I wasn't really sure what LEGO Robotics was. I'd grown up with LEGO being about uh, bricks and building and that sort of thing, whereas LEGO Robotics is suddenly using the Technic pieces, it's building robots, it's programming the robots, and it's actually getting them to do autonomous missions. I didn't realize then that it would be something that I absolutely adored and it became a passion of my life that, uh, that I really I haven't been able to, to put down. Um, but from that first competition, we, we entered the regional competition, which was held at the, at the then MTN Science Center, and didn't really expect to do very well. Um, in fact, only one of the four teams qualified for the national competition. Um, and it was at that national competition, which was held in Joburg, we got to fly up to Joburg. I suddenly realized that there was so much more to, to what I, I hadn't so much more to Lego that I that I hadn't realized and so much more of a community um, in all these robotics teams that are, that we were meeting from all over the place and and getting new ideas and sharing new ideas and it was then that really the the bug bit um, that I, I just could not let robotics go. After that first competition, um, I ended up competing in another six competitions, uh, going to nationals five times and coming second in South Africa overall, my team, um, which is now called the Kitty Wings Dream Team. At the age of 16, I reached the limit of my involvement as a, a participant in the competition, um, which definitely saddened me at the time. Um, it wasn't something that I was particularly ready for. And this meant that I realized very quickly that I wanted to get involved from, a, from another angle, from another perspective, um, and that was in, uh, in terms of coaching, um, coaching teams to, to participate in the competition. After the year that I, I didn't participate, I then my first role was in a, a mentoring role to mentor a team where there were just too many teams for one coach to handle. Um, so my first role was, was mentoring that team, and actually, in fact, I only got to mentor them on the actual competition day. Um, which was something very weird to, to meet a team and be able to mentor them on the same day. We got actually a lot done in that day. Their robot broke on the day and we managed to uh, resurrect it um, like within 20 minutes. Uh, so so that, that was quite fun. And it was then that I, I realized that actually I wanted to go into to teaching and training the robotics um, on a more uh, throughout the season basis than only coming in on the actual competition day. So the following year, I got involved with teaching at a school called Farries. Um, it's a primary school here in Cape Town. When I started at Farries, I firstly wanted to make sure that I gave these kids the, the absolute package when it came to teaching LEGO Robotics, which meant that I wanted to really start at the foundation. So while a couple of the kids had been involved in robotics or LEGO Robotics in the past, I, I really wanted to just start at the beginning. Um, and I did find that while there were loads of resources available from LEGO Education, LEGO themselves, First LEGO League and other First LEGO League teams that I'd been in contact with, um, there, there wasn't really a, a full syllabus that, that I could teach them. So it was at that stage that I started devising um, a robotics, a LEGO robotics syllabus, um, starting from the basics of programming using pseudocode, um, all the way up to uh, more advanced uh, mechanisms and, and techniques to, with, with regards to, to the actual building of the robots. Um, and since then I've coached, I think in the region of eight different teams now. Um, at the, the, the robotics competitions, taking many of them to nationals. And last year, in fact, my, my kid, now the Kitty Wings Dream Team still, but in a very different form from when it was in my days, um, came third in the country last year. So I've chatted to you briefly about the, the first LEGO League competition, um, but I wanted to give you a bit more of a, a, an idea of what actually is involved in the competition. Um, it's a team-based competition uh, requiring teams of either between four and 10 members in a team. Um, the members need to be between the ages of 9 and 16 and 
because of the, the nature of it being a team-based competition, a, a large component of the competition and actually something which you're marked on and judged on at the competition is teamwork and collaboration and, and how you work well together, um, but also how, how you work with other teams and that sort of thing. Um, so it's more than just a, a, a robotics component. Uh, in fact, there, there are four components in total, so starting with the, the teamwork component being very important. Um, then there is the actual robot component. Uh, how well have you designed your robot? Is it robust? Does it perform what you want it to perform? Um, then there is the uh, actual uh, playing field, should we say, um, which is actually competing against other teams uh, on a playing field of approximately 18 different missions. All the mission models are made out of LEGO. Um, they're on this big table and you've got two and a half minutes for your robot to autonomously um, compete as, uh, or complete as many of these missions as possible to score as many points as you can, each mission giving a different amount of points. Um, in that two and a half minutes, um, you can touch the robot only when it is in your base area. So the, the robots really need to be autonomous and while they do break down and you can get penalties and all these sort of things, um, it is quite difficult to, to, to manage to keep your cool in those environments. Um, which is also where the teamwork component comes back in. Um, at the end of the competition, you've, you've got a, a best of three rounds, essentially, of these uh, missions which you're doing, and your top score is taken for that component. And finally, something which I, I quite like about the competition um, is that it involves a research component or a project component. Um, each year, there's a different theme which is involved, uh, which is given by First Lego League International, um, and relating to a, a real-world problem. Last year's theme was uh, around space exploration, um, but confining it to within our own solar system and how we as a, a human race are, are looking to expand beyond just the Earth. Um, and this is something which is quite a, a big topic to be giving to kids between the ages of 9 and 16. Um, and essentially, how what, what the competition is expecting of them is to, to find a problem uh, relating to this theme and then give an innovative solution to it um, in, uh, in that the, the solution shouldn't be something which has been uh, researched and, and given before. Um, so, so not only is it researching for a problem, giving all the, the reasoning behind that, but it's also coming up with a solution which, which is unique and different um, and then showing why the solution actually is something which should be considered. Um, these are very big tasks to be expecting of these kids. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I actually enjoy this competition so much is because it really pushes these kids to, to go beyond just the, the normal boundaries of a, a classroom which you would expect of them in terms of maybe a, an oral presentation or a normal research project at a primary school level. Um, we're really asking these kids to, to go beyond that and, and push them to a level which might even be considered at a university level. So one of the reasons that I have connected with LEGO Robotics and particularly the, the, the first LEGO League competition and what the, the values that it stands for is that I have learned a tremendous amount of skills and uh, life lessons through these competitions and through LEGO Robotics. From a practical aspect, uh, there's, there's things like problem solving and learning how to, to think through a, a, a problem in a very rational and step-by-step -step way, because that's how one needs to program these robots. Um, so, so just in terms of problem solving, I have really grown and learnt and seen in other kids and the, 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 the growing in terms of how they would solve a problem and how they would address it. Um, but also there's more of an aspect of the teamwork and the, the collaborative nature, which I've really been able to apply in far more than just the, the classroom environment. I've actually been able to take that to, to university projects, to working life, learning how to actually uh, engage with a team in a far more meaningful way than just uh, putting up with the team members, essentially. So if any of this has interested you or inspired you and, and you want to get involved in LEGO Robotics, um, the first step which you could take would definitely be to get yourself a LEGO Robotics kit. Um, at the moment, this is the LEGO EV3 uh, Mindstorms uh, kit, which you can purchase from most uh, retailers who sell LEGO. There are many resources available in terms of actually getting involved in the competitions. Um, 
If you are wanting to get involved in the First Ego League competition, you can visit firstsa.org um, and get involved with starting a team. If you're a kid watching this at home and, and wanting to get involved with this, my suggestion would actually be to go to your teachers and ask them either if there is a LEGO Robotics program already at the school, or if not, maybe potentially starting a LEGO Robotics program. They're very easy to start, and there are many robotics competitions around the country which the, t which the teams can then get involved in. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Please remember to like and subscribe to the channel and do share it with your friends.